Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to pass the CSCS exam in 2024. Let's just start off with the fact that the CSCS exam has gotten harder. In 2021, 57% of students passed the CSCS exam on their first try. Now, that may already sound like a low number, but in 2023, less than 40% of the students passed their CSCS exam on the first try. So it has gotten significantly harder, especially on the practical applied section. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the two sections of the exam, exactly what is on the exam, and then we're gonna go over some of the common errors that people are making on the exam, and some really important study points that you definitely wanna get right. We're also gonna show you individual exercises and then point out the small details in the book. That way you guys can really see how to hone in on these small details and make sure you don't make these mistakes on the exam. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to start off, what is the CSCS exam? CSCS stands for Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist, and it's an exam from the National Strength and Conditioning Association. This is the gold standard in strength and conditioning, and it shows that you have a really high level of education and knowledge in strength and conditioning. This exam does require a bachelor's degree. For the time being, up until 2029, any bachelor's degree does make you eligible for the exam, but after 2029, there is going to be a requirement where you do have to have a related degree. Okay, so how does the exam actually work? Well, the exam is broken down into two different sections. Both of those sections are all multiple choice questions, and all of the questions on the exam just have three answer choices. The first portion of the exam is called the scientific foundations, and it covers things like exercise science, nutrition, and sports psychology. The second part of the exam is called the practical applied section. This section is more about exercise technique, program design, organization and administration, and facility and how a gym is laid out and things like that. You can find the exact breakdown of what is on the exam through what's called the NSCA Detailed Content Outline. This is something that the NSCA publishes to show you exactly how many questions are coming from each section of the exam. It also tells you how many of the exam questions are based on recall versus analysis and application. As you can see, the majority of the questions are based on how you can analyze the information to come to a conclusion on a more complex question. So you can't just memorize information and expect to pass the exam. I've ran a CSCS study group on Facebook, posting practice questions and Facebook Lives, talking about exam topics for a few years now, and there's been some trends of what people consistently struggle with or intend to fail by just one or two questions is the practical applied section. Particularly, the program design and the exercise technique tend to be really challenging in this section. This is the case even for people who have had a strength conditioning internship or who have been training clients for a few years because you have to be really specific and making sure you learn the NSCA book specific exercise technique points. So that's what I wanna cover a little bit more of and show you guys how you can really hone in on those small details. All right, let's take a look at this video of a push press. So during this push press exercise, what do you think this athlete needs to do? We're gonna give you three answer choices, just like the exam. Does this athlete need to dip deeper? Does this athlete need to dip shallower? Or does this athlete need to initiate the movement by moving the hips backwards? Lock in your answer choice, just like this is the exam, A, B, or C. And the answer in this case is actually to dip shallower. If we look at page 402 on this fourth edition book and we go to those small details, you can see that the dip portion of a push press should only be to a quarter squat position. Now, maybe you had a coach or a mentor who told you to always push your hips back when you squat, so you thought that that was the answer. But again, if we're looking at the small details of the book, we can see that we're actually supposed to bend the hips and the knees evenly and drop the barbell straight down. This is a pretty good example of a small detail that doesn't look that much different from a good example and a bad example of a push press. And you really need to have these details down to be able to get these answers right. Let's look at another example. So now we're gonna cover the second pull of a snatch. So let's look at the second pull of a snatch here and tell me what you think is going on. Should this athlete either A, plantar flex the ankles sooner, B, keep the shoulders forward over the bar, or C, keep the barbell close to the hips but not contacting the hips? Lock in your answer, looking at the video, and decide what you think the answer is. And the answer in this case is B, keep the shoulders over top of the barbell. Again, this is a small detail from two pages of a ton of information on something like the snatch, but we wanna hone in on the fact that the shoulders should be staying over top of the barbell and the elbows should be pointed out. We don't wanna plantar flex the ankle until the end of the second pull, so we don't wanna do that earlier. 
And then lastly, it is okay to contact the barbell with your hips. That is part of a snatch. As you can see, you really need to get the small details down and practice seeing these in video format and developing your coaching eye. That's why in our full study course, the Movement System CSCS study course, we have over 100 exercise technique videos. They show you a video, let it play, let you choose between three answers, and then see if you make mistakes so that way you can learn from those mistakes and really develop that good coaching eye that has these specific details down. I'll put a link below if you want to join our study group or check out our CSCS study course for more CSCS practice questions. All right, let's go through some more examples. Now let's look at this athlete doing the T test. So according to the correct way to do the T test, does this athlete need to change any of these three things? Should the athlete touch the line instead of touching the cone? Should the athlete shuffle right at the first cone instead of left? Or should we leave the technique as is? So seeing the T test run, what do you think? Is it A, B, or C? And in this case, the answer is actually C, leave the technique as is. There are a lot of different drills like the 5105 Pro Agility Drill where you can touch the line with your hand or your foot, but in the case of the T-Test, you are actually supposed to touch the base of the cone. Again, small detail that we need to pull out to make sure that we're getting these things right on the exam. And let's just go through one more on testing procedures to again hone in on these small details. So now let's cover the 300 yard shuttle run. So the question is, what is the proper way to score the 300 yard shuttle run? Is it A, best of three trials, B, best of two trials, or C, average of two trials. As a reminder, the shuttle run involves running down and back with a partner, 25 yards, six trips that accumulate 300 total yards. The correct way to score this test is average of two trials. All right, so those are some examples of the small details that you need to get down on the exercise science and the testing section but there's also similar small details in program design. The biggest recommendation I have for program design and the easiest thing to practice is to just go into the book, open up to a program design example towards the back of the book, think about it, look at it in detail, close the book, wait for a minute, and then rewrite that program as similar as possible. If you're looking at a basketball program, maybe write a lacrosse program, but keep the sets and reps as similar and the progression similar to what you remember. Think of all the small details, the number of exercises, the types of exercises, how many power exercises versus strength exercises, the proximity to repetition max that you're programming. Meaning are you programming six reps at six rep max, it's a really challenging strength-based load, or are you programming four reps at eight rep max, which can be done more fast for power. These small details will help you determine if it's more of a off-season, pre-season, or in-season program, or which of multiple answer choices is the most appropriate for a specific phase of training or for a specific type of athlete. If you want to see more examples and more video breakdowns like this, I'll actually link below to some other previous videos that I've done on program design just on YouTube, but then you can also check out the Movement System CSCS study course if you want it organized chapter by chapter to really learn this material well. All right, so what questions do you have about the CSCS exam? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you join our CSCS study group, which I'll link in the description below as well, so we can see what has worked for other people to study, join in on the discussion questions and the practice questions, and learn from each other. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.